Hi, I'm Dawn Davenport. I'm the director of Creating a Family. We're a nonprofit that provides resources and education on adoption and infertility. Today we're going to be talking about how to evaluate an adoption referral or a birth mother match. Uh, first, let me refer you to some Creating a Family radio shows. They're an hour in length, and so they're going to be give you a lot more information than this short video. One show, or actually two shows that we've done on this specific topic, one was on December 30, 2009, and the other was on February 4, 2009. Now we've also done some other shows that would be helpful. Uh, one was on October 1, 2008, and uh, that show was on uh, fetal alcohol syndrome uh, and adoption. And another show uh, that I think would be helpful was one on December 9, 2009, uh, and we talked. Uh, the title of the show was Nature versus Nurture. But in that show. Uh, we talked with some leading experts on uh, mental illness and the, uh, the heritability factors in mental illness. So all of those shows, plus quite frankly uh, a great many of the Creating a Family radio shows, touch on topics that would be of interest to you when evaluating a referral or a match. And you can find those at the radio page of creatingafamily.com. It is important when you are looking at uh, information on a referral or a match that you figure out whether or not you are the right family to parent this child. Uh, parenting is for life and you want to make sure that you're the right family for that child. But just as important, it's not just uh, for deciding whether or not to accept the referral, it's also uh, information that you need for parenting that child. Um, uh, in the future. So for all those reasons you need to uh, carefully look at the information uh, um, that you have. And that's one of the things that we need to be when we're talking about uh, uh, evaluating a referral or match. We have to be realistic and we need to base it on the relatively limited information that you have at your disposal when you're having to make this decision. Um, Health, when we talk about health, uh, health of children, uh, it encompasses so many different aspects. It's the current health of the child right now, it's the likelihood uh, for future health for this child, uh, it includes educational issues, it can include mental health. So uh, when we speak of health, it is a very broad category and that's important to remember. Um, one of the singular most important things to look at is growth. Healthy children are growing well. Uh, and that includes, by the way, head circumference. Um, what you're uh, in an ideal world, what you would like to see is a lot of different growth measurements over time, uh, a lot of different dots on the growth chart, so to speak, uh, so that you can chart the child's growth and see that the child is growing or not growing. Um, it's important to make a distinction in, in infants between a premature infant and a child who is small for their, his or her gestational age. We expect premature babies to be small. We are more worried about a child who is full term and small for his age or premature and small for the gestational age. So uh, that's one thing to keep in mind uh, in the, that distinction is one thing to keep in mind. Another thing to consider with growth is, if, is the child's growth proportionate? Uh, is the head and the body growing in proportion to each other? Uh, and one thing don't forget, um, with it, some of this growth information is available through sonogram if you have concerns um, prior to birth. Um, we need to talk about substance abuse. Uh, substance abuse during prenatal exposure to alcohol and other drugs um, is harmful to children. Uh, according to the adoption experts that I have spoken with, um, here in the United States, the drugs of concern would be alcohol, cocaine, and heroin. Um, with international adoption, the primary uh, drug of concern is alcohol. Um, and no substance uh, taken during pregnancy is good for a fetus, uh, but most doctors agree that alcohol is probably the most damaging. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about mental health issues because it is so complex. Um, health issues are heritable. Uh, certain health disease, mental, Ill mental illnesses are heritable, I should say. Um, but um, the overall risk is relatively low. Let me give you an example. Both bipolar and schizophrenia, um, if one of the birth parents is diagnosed with uh, either of those diseases, the child has a 10% chance of inheriting the disease. That's higher than, than you would want. On the other hand, the child has a 90% chance of not inheriting it. 
this issue really is more complex than the time we have, so let me refer you to the uh, both the December uh, 9th and the December 30, 2009 shows where we talked about this at length. With special needs adoptions, which are becoming more common in international adoptions, I want to caution people to be aware that some special needs are actually part of a greater syndrome, and it's so that the, the full effect of the special needs is greater than the one isolated special needs that you might know about. So that is something to ask for more information on. There's a lot of good resources out there, and international adoption doctors or adoption doctors can help you with that. Um, I will tell you that international adoption doctors have told me that they're not seeing a lot of children with really chronic conditions, so that's a good thing. The other thing to keep in mind is that a special needs diagnosis is often this child's ticket out of an orphanage and into foster care. And as a gen generally speaking, foster care is better for kids. Um, speaking along that lines, uh, we need to talk about the risks of orphanage care. Uh, institutions are not good places to raise children, uh, and there are long-term consequences of institution. Or there can be long-term consequences of institutionalization. Um, I will say that orphanages seem to be improving worldwide, through, especially in those countries that are participating in international adoption. The quality of care in orphanages is dependent on so many factors. Um, uh, some of the factors would be the adult-child ratio, the turnover of caregivers, uh, and the child's life and exposures uh, prior to being institutionalized. With all types of adoptions, the children at greatest risk are the children where there are a cluster of risk factors. Um, for example, in domestic adoption, if you have a birth mother who smoked and dabbled in drugs and had a very chaotic uh, family life and no family support, that child is at greater risk. With international adoption, uh, uh, similar risk factors. In addition, you can look for a child who has been in an institution for a long time, um, who uh, are, has been moved about, bounced about between institutions. Um, those would also be risk factors for that child, and also children who have been removed per abuse and neglect which leads us to a discussion of, of how to evaluate children coming from uh, foster care, both internationally, but in particular here in the United States because we have um, more information. The best piece of advice I can give you is to get information, get as much information. Don't just read the summaries, read the full reports. What you want to see is every piece of paper that uh, social services has on this child. You would like to see uh, pediatric records, uh, preferably uh, going back in time. That may not be available. Uh, keep in mind the pediatrician the child is currently seeing may not be the pediatrician that's seeing the child throughout its life, probably won't be. In fact, you'd like to uh, get any psychological evaluations and read that. You would like to see the child's school records, and if possible, you'd like to talk to the foster parents. You want as much information as you can get. Thank you for joining us today, and I would refer you again to the Creating a Family website where we have lots and lots of resources uh, that will help you evaluate your referral or your birth mother match. Thanks.